Hello, dear viewers, and welcome back to another episode of This Week in Canada. My name is Roberto Wakerel Cruz, and I'm joined by a guest host this week. Uh, everyone, I'm sure you know her already. She has a couple episodes already on the channel. It's Sam. Hey, Sam, Hi. say hello. Hey, so glad to be here. Thanks for uh, having me. I'm glad you're here too, but before we get started on the show, we have a packed episode as we always do. Uh, why don't you go to the links below and find ways to support us. You can go to our premium content, you can buy a shirt, give a like on the Facebook page and be sure to like and subscribe. Now, let's get started with our first topic. Uh, this one's about Stephen Guibo again. It's the biggest story in Canada. It's still going and the situation seems to just be getting worse. Isn't that kind of the sad reality around it all. Um, first off, Stephen Guibo went into our, our first story. We'll put it up on the screen here. Uh, a memo got leaked from uh, the Heritage Committee that basically give, gave a big rundown of what websites were going to be uh, censored or regulated. And uh, it was pretty much all of the sites, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was it was a lot more than I think I had anticipated, although, you know, he never came out forthright and said, like, gave an exhaustive list. So it's kind of our bad for thinking it would only apply to things like Spotify, Netflix and YouTube. Right. But I think I think what's most worrisome is the language around, uh, you know, having these big companies pay their fair share. If you read the bill, tax does not come up once the word tax. Right. It's, right. it's all about content moderation in, in terms of, you know, forcing Netflix to pay a lump sum to uh, Canadian content creators. Right. So I just think that the language is so charged around this. Like, yeah. And that's why it's a little concerning. And that's why I guess these bills are written such nebulous generalities is so that they can just go ahead with whatever they really want. But the list, you know, when you hear uh, tech giants or web giants paying their fair share, there's a few names that come to mind. Obviously, Google, uh, Facebook, you could argue are like the biggest companies in the world, kind of control how people think and stuff. Uh, but when you go into the list, it gets into regulating things that you would never really think would be regulated. Uh, Adult websites that's really strange i don't even want to know what that would look like but it's basically every website all the way down from like tsn direct tva brit box which i believe is just like a british streaming service which is what is that how are they gonna what canadian content is brit box gonna put uh facebook watch and then all the regular ones like spotify apple music amazon music Castbox, stitcher cbc radio which i mean you would think the cbc would already have enough canadian content but uh, apparently not. So yeah, it's pretty scary. But one thing I wanted to ask your opinion of, um, and why I said the situation was getting worse, it seemed, was that this bill has seemed to have gotten the support of not just the NDP, who wants some changes made to the bill to tweak it a little bit to make it a little more uh, beneficial for Canadian content creators or whatever. I still think that's a bad idea. But the Bloc Québécois has come out now and said, um, yeah, we like we're, we're on board. We're totally on board for it. Which, I mean, I don't even get, like, do you understand why that would even, I don't get it. <laughs> well, Quebecers for decades have been obsessed with the Americanization and the uh, English, you know, the dominance of the English Anglosphere. culture. Anglosphere. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Of, of Quebec. So I think this is a part and parcel of their uh, kind of crusade against, you know, making sure that, that French is uh, sanctified and protected at all, uh, against all, you know, outside threats. And so I, I'm not surprised at all that the block is is supporting this. I mean, it goes hand in hand with Bill uh, 96 that they're introducing, right? right. To you yeah. know, push push more French into the forefront of, uh, of Quebecers and Quebecers lives. Uh, so yeah, no, and, and even when uh, Stephen Guibault came out, uh, the first press conference he had on the bill, he said, he said that he wants his, his kids to be able to find good French Canadian content when they, you know, go onto Netflix uh, right there. So I think that this this garners a lot of support among among, you know, especially older Quebecers who are concerned with with the French culture and the state that it's in right now. Yeah, I guess that actually makes a lot more sense. It would actually make more sense if this was a bill proposed by the Bloc, you would think. But I don't understand because like you said, there's taxes that aren't really mentioned in this and I don't really understand I guess when they say their fair share, they're not talking about their fair share in like in terms of having them pay more or anything. They're just talking about like making sure Canadians can 
find Canadian stuff, which I mean, there's already, when I go on Spotify, I can find Canadian content really, really easily. I mean, also, let's just really quick. I wanted to, this is a little unrelated and maybe a little mean, but let's pull up some photos of Stephen Gibo at his worst. Um, <laughs> this fir first photo, as you guys all probably know, he was a Greenpeace activist. Uh, he climbed the CM Tower, CN Tower. Uh, he's a big green guy, so he's literally hugging a tree here in, I don't know, an A and E kind of looking shirt. I think that's the kind of adult content he wants to see on adult <laughs> sites, you know. Yeah, <laughs> Stephen Gibo gets it on with a tree. Uh, the, next <laughs> the next photo, I don't know how tall Stephen Gibo is. I've never seen him in person. But this next photo uh, that is on his Wikipedia page, unfortunately, like that, this is awful, shows him in an oversized kind of blazer. Um, it, it, these awful jeans. I mean, just the least tailored to his figure I've ever seen. Some weird shoes. And the interviewer doing this kind of weird squat thing to get to his level. Um, <laughs> Listen, when you want to come after Canadian rights and Canadian charter rights, who has the time to style themselves, Roberto? Come on. No. <laughs> Not him. No. I mean... He's made a good call on the beard, I think, you know, like he's kind of spruced up a little bit. Now he has a beard. He's looking good. But this last photo is the worst of them all where he's leaning against the tree. Um, I, I don't know if he's hired a stylist or he just doesn't go out in public because I don't know what he looks like now too much. The glasses are a big step up. I mean, really, it makes him look at least intelligent. Um but yeah, man, not a, not a very handsome guy. And this, you know, we were talking before the show started about how short uh, every dictator has ever been. <laughs> and they're all like 5'3". I was looking up Stalin. He's like 5'3". Like, yeah, they're the just angry little men. I'm sure if you uh, did statistics on prisoners, I'm sure they're all like under 5'5". Five five. Just the, the angriest little people. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Uh, you're going to, yeah, you're going to piss off our short viewers, our short <laughs> I don't think tall guys go to jail. That's my theory <laughs> uh, based on zero evidence. There is a funny thing I saw floating around. Maybe if I can find it, we'll put it up on the screen of like famous people who have been assassinated. So like Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> six, five, and then the heights of their assassins all being like five, six. And it's actually true. You can look it up like Archduke Ferdinand, six, two, Gabriel Princip, five, one, like all these, all wow, these this is Wow, <laughs> this is something you've really thought about. How tall are you, Roberto? <laughs> Well, because I'm in the middle. I'm five. I'm five nine. So ah, okay. All right. Yeah, I'm average height and average weight. So I think a lot about like what would what I've gotten to choose my own destiny as to where I go because I'm right down the middle. Um, but who knows? If I was three inches taller, maybe I don't know. I'd be president. And if I was three inches shorter, maybe I'd be assassinating the president. You know. Wow, you're really, truly blessed, aren't you? <laughs> I guess so. I, I, I am the master of my own destiny. Anyway, uh, should we go on, I guess, to the next topic? Actually, wait, there's one more thing I want to, to bring up on this one. Um, was the open letter. Hmm. Uh, there was an open letter, and we won't go too deep into this because it's kind of nerdy. Um, it's just a bunch of internet experts, which I don't know. Have you ever met an internet expert? They're not... <laughs> uh, nope. No, yeah, not they're... not above basement, at least. <laughs> yeah, you got to go down to their level yeah. uh, to meet an internet expert. But it's a bunch of names: former CRTC directors, uh, executive directors of like open media, former chairmen of the CRTC, surveillance studies centers, Queen's University professors. A lot of really intelligent people. I'm gonna guess about 25 here signed this letter. I should have found the number before, probably. But they're basically saying. More than ever, this is one of the biggest assaults on our democracy and freedom of speech that's ever happened. Um, you know, I, it, it's kind of weird that it almost seems partisan, like because the conservatives are the only ones who are like actively disavowing this. But I think it just kind of shows that uh, like the conservatives might be the only ones who are like correct on this issue. Which I mean, good for them. Well, I'm not well, two, two things on that note. One, sure. conservatives are typically against Canadian content because Canadian content don't like them too much. Right. I don't know. Maybe this is going a bit off topic, but I was listening to uh, Jamie Poisson's interview of Erin O'Toole, and man, was she intense. She did not let up. She fixated on, on very like random things like what do you think Derek Sloan was thinking in his head when he came out and said that you know that 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 Dr. Tam had you know dual fidelity to the or whatever it was right and and yeah. and so one two I I'm I'm dumbfounded by whose interests this bill serves besides 
interest groups, right? Like if you right. look at who who comes out in favor of this bill, it's it's you know uh, various art collectives um, that do not in any way uh, represent the Canadian public in, yeah. in a general sense. Yeah. Um, and it's and frankful, frankly, um, it's because their content isn't getting out there, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, that's the thing kidding? I fear. That's the thing I fear most about this bill is that I'm just gonna go on Spotify, Spotify or YouTube, and just see a bunch of shit, <laughs> a bunch of Canadian ass content. <laughs> so uh, I, re- I really hope that's not the case. I like to think Canadians are talented, but when you when you look at what gets money <laughs> from the government, like what gets government funding, it tends to be like some big razzmatazz identity politics like something and, and they just throw throw money at these people to make garbage content that nobody wants to watch i don't know yeah yeah the words he used was we're not going to give people the choice whether they want to tell indigenous stories french canadian stories black canadian stories and listen that's their agenda right now i i get it politically yeah, um sure. i just like i think from general audiences there's been no call but besides a call to actually tax them, which would right. actually be, you know, making sure they pay their fair share, but that this bill doesn't doesn't even touch it at all. Yeah, yeah, I agree. All right, let's move on to the to the next topic. Wow, what a fun transition! What a fun segment! I gotta say, <laughs> uh, that was a lot better than Nico's done in a little while. I mean, I miss Nico, but like that was good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Way more fun. I mean, Nico is, <laughs> everyone knows how it's just pretentious that guy is. Anyway, uh, let's move on to our next and final just little topic to, you know, uh, cleanse the palate a little bit. Um, Sam, what kind of uh, laptop do you have? <laughs> I have a MacBook. Right. MacBook. So, uh, yeah. you know how, and you know how Mac products, they come with a couple stickers. Uh, yeah, I'm aware. Yeah, that yeah. You, that you would put on maybe like a, I don't know a car or something like or a, a laptop. Not a laptop in this case because Justin Trudeau uh, <laughs> got <laughs> caught um, using a Mac sticker on an HP laptop, and it's really obvious. Uh, in fact, let's just pull the photo up here. So this was for an advertisement that was for the Progress Check-in Survey. Uh, and as you can clearly see, let's do a zoom in. This is an HP laptop um, with a MacBook sticker on it. And he's using it on a couple of books. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's all around just kind of embarrassing photo. But I was saying earlier that uh, I think I've done this. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why would you do that? I think I've done it. Like, I mean, okay. So in the, that first part there, I was trying to think of what else would you put these laptop like these stickers on? Uh, you if you put it on a car, then people are like, "Huh, nice." Well, you got an Apple car, and you know you just get made fun of from behind. Or you could just. It, I was also like, it was grade nine or grade eight or grade nine, you know, and it was just like, okay, I, like I can't afford a MacBook. They're like twelve hundred dollars. So uh, why don't I just put a sticker that makes people think from like maybe across the street. And you were fooling everyone. And what did you gain? <laughs> what did you have to gain by fooling people into thinking I, you had a MacBook? I did this whole thing where it's like I downloaded a taskbar that made it look <laughs> like I had like uh, like like a MacBook taskbar. Oh, and yeah. even this program that made the exit and minimize buttons look like the MacBook ones. So I was like, I just got a faux MacBook I got here. And this is really fun. And I'm 13 years old and it's not a problem. <laughs> You wow, and everyone was like, hey, cool MacBook, man. Wow, wish I had one. And no, he said, pe- let me tell you something. You can have one too. And people then, were, and then yeah, paid. people were more impressed that I could do that. Hmm. <laughs> you, you know? Okay. Anyway, I'm not a grown adult and I'm not the Prime Minister of Canada who uh, <laughs> did this for a survey. Uh, apparently, it was at some volunteer event uh, where yeah. uh, it's not his laptop. He, he has a I, MacBook. He's rich. I love I love the fact that he threw a volunteer under the bus for it. <laughs> yes. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Some sucker, some loser gave me this laptop. Like, man, no accountability. Phony from head to toe. This Phony guy. from head to toe. And so, yeah, his, uh, I think it was the liberal communications director, Braden Cayley, 
I uh, didn't know who this guy was before this, but he tweets, huh, nice hard-hitting sleuthing going on over here. A team laptop borrowed for a moment at the LPC Volunteer Hub for a drop-in thank you to volunteer, blah, 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 blah. Basically saying, oh, some poor volunteer couldn't <laughs> didn't, <laughs> didn't have a MacBook to give, and now <laughs> Justin Trudeau looks stupid. I mean, just oh, own God. up to it. Just it, it was a funny thing. It's a funny thing, and we get to laugh for a moment at how goofy he looks <laughs> at using this cheap laptop. Um, obviously, this is for a survey that I did, and uh, at the end, it's just for it's a, just to get your email. They want you to join their emailing list, so I would recommend not taking the survey. Uh, anyhow, <laughs> do you have any other thoughts on that? You want to rip into me some more for my <laughs> laptop that I had when I was thirteen? No, I, I don't want to. I don't want to go too hard on on my first Twig appearance, so I'll I'll stop there. But it does remind me of uh, when what, Elizabeth May, the leader of the Green Party, was caught with a Photoshop. That's, ex- that's right. Couch? That's exact. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Th- yeah. So if per- you can explain that one, go ahead. Well, I, I I just know that she she had a photo, and initial the original photo had her holding a plastic cup with a plastic spoon. Um, pretty controversial, and but they only exacerbated it by by photoshopping the straw out of it. Or did they photoshop the entire cup to make it like? Oh no renewable? no! Let's pull up the photo right now. So it's yeah. not just that they got rid of the spoon or the straw or whatever. They changed it to like a metal thermos with a, <laughs> <laughs> with a Green Party logo on it, and got rid of the straw completely. Um, mm-hmm. It's so strange to think of what the thought process was behind this. It's not a good photo. I mean. For those of you who uh, live in the Montreal area, or maybe this was everywhere, they used photos of Elizabeth May that weren't photos of Elizabeth May. It was like a drawing of her with like a flower garland on because she's so unphotogenic. Unfortunately, you know, I don't want to go after this poor alcoholic woman too much, but um, she's not very photogenic. So they could have chose any photo of her for this official ad on their website. But no, they chose the one where they wanted to... uh, make her look like an idiot and everyone noticed right away. Right. So yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. I, I yeah, good, good call back there. Anyhow, I think that's about it. Uh, right. we've probably gone a, a little bit long here. So, uh, thank you very much, Sam, for joining yeah. us. We hope that you come back soon. Um, do you want to say anything to our fans here real quick? Um, no, good. Uh-uh. Because, because James is giving me the sign to end everything right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so make sure you go to the links below, like our oh, Facebook, yeah. very important. Uh, make sure that you buy a t-shirt. They still say Bobby and Nico on them, but you could buy one anyway. Uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, give us a like, become a member, give us a donation, and come back next week where Sam could return or may not, and it may just be me again. So thank you very much. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>